Hey what's up, Brother Baston here. So today's tutorial is going to be about coloring and before we get into that I just want to say that I'm probably the last person who should be giving any sort of advice uh, on coloring. Uh, what I do with colors, it, it, it barely qualifies as coloring, like I've talked about this many times before on this channel, but I just like flat colors, like if it was acceptable to just have nothing but flat colors, uh, I would use nothing but flat colors, but the, um, like the huge majority of people out there uh, tend to consider flat colors as like unfinished pretty much like to to call it coloring you have to add all kinds of uh, like blending and shading and stuff unless you're like Mike Mignola or something like that like that level of uh, genius then you can get away with flat colors but unfortunately I'm not Mike Mignola so I've tried to come up with some methods over the years that would kind of allow me to add a little bit of uh, like variation in my flat colors without losing too much of that uh, that flat color look that I like. So basically, kind of like ways to fool people into thinking that I'm doing coloring, like quotation marks coloring, uh, without actually doing it. And that usually involves uh, gradients. And gradients are something that can be really easy to, uh, to overdo or to overuse. Like they can very easily give that sort of MS Paint type of vibe um, if used wrong. So uh, I'll try to talk about how I use them, but I, I think the key to making them work is really to... Uh, to stop thinking in terms of coloring as painting and start thinking of coloring as a uh, like a form of graphic design uh, like almost think of just abstract shapes like how do i arrange all these shapes and colors in a, in a pleasing way um, so uh, yeah as someone who is bad at coloring but also bad at graphic design I am just uh, clearly the, the perfect person to make a video on the subject. Okay, so here we have a character, uh, a couple rocks and some foliage. These are the things that we're going to use to demonstrate these uh, gradient methods that I use. Uh, you can also see the entire screen, like the entire uh, interface of uh, Clip Studio Paint here for a change. Uh, mostly because I want to show the uh, color wheel here to show the colors uh, that I pick and why I pick them and then the uh, the layers down here so you can see the way that i've uh, set up my layers i just have um, like flat colors on one layer uh, i've grouped the uh, the rocks and the foliage separately from the character so i have the the flat colors on one layer and the lines on another layer and same thing for the character i have the flats here on one layer and the lines up here on a separate layer and the first thing that i want you to notice is that all of these colors like the the basic the first colors that i pick for the the flat colors they're all kind of um boring or not maybe not boring but they're they're all like mid-tones there's no extreme saturation or darkness or light like in, in the color uh picker here in the color wheel all of these colors would be except for the the, the red stuff on the head but that's on a, on a separate uh layer here but all of the the colors would be somewhere in the middle of the uh of this square like there's nothing uh super saturated which would be on this side of the square there's nothing really light up here or dark up here it's all kind of there in the middle and the reason for that is because this whole method this whole thing that i'm doing is all about contrast uh, and you'll see when we start adding some some more exciting colors some saturation some darkness some light uh that those things have to look exciting uh, in contrast to, to something else and that contrast is these kind of boring um, faded uh, mid-tone colors so first i'll create a new layer on top of my uh, flat color layer here and then i will select the the color the specific flat color that i want to work on in this case it's the foliage green and then we just need to think like what kind of exciting colors do I want to add to this so I'll grab my gradient tool over here and I'm thinking so the way that I think about this I'm, I'm the more bold I am in my choices at this point the more exciting the end result is going to be so um, I don't want to just um, if I select this color here you can see like I said it's somewhere there in the middle uh, I don't I don't want to just change the um the saturation and the value i also want to change the the hue so uh, for this one let's say that i don't know maybe we can add some blue to the uh, to this uh, <clears throat> to this foliage i'll go like all the way into the sort of cyan tones maybe um and let's go with like a super saturated like 100 percent saturation and let's go into the darker shades here maybe something over here and let's just add our gradient and see what it looks like okay that, that could be something interesting 
Uh, we al already have a little bit more um, color variation. There's some hue variation. And um, that could be... Actually, we could even go darker. Let's go a little bit darker. Again, it's all about that, that contrast. And if we think of the... Uh, whatever color you pick as the the darker gradient you kind of have at least i imagine it kind of as my um, my shadow color almost so if there's like a directional light uh shining on this uh, this foliage maybe in this case it comes from somewhere above i'll try to put the the, the darker gradients on the opposite opposite side of that so now we have our darker shades here uh, maybe on top we can go again. Let's try to avoid the the pure green colors. Maybe let's go into the uh, the yellows so we have some more hue variation. Let's stay in the uh, the super saturated colors. Much more interesting, and they will contrast with the uh, very mid tone kind of greens. So maybe something like this over here. Let's see what that looks like. Maybe it could be coming from this direction. Yeah, that 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 could be a, that could be a nice, uh, nice color there. So we have uh, we have our two gradients. This is uh, this is super basic, super simple setup. We come from this boring midtone green into something already. That kind of looks uh, a little bit more uh, interesting and exciting. So then we come to the main point or the main step of this entire gradient method. It's the point where I'm going to use uh, whatever I have created here. So this this multiple gradient in different directions with, with some darker colors, some lighter colors, some more saturated colors, some less saturated colors. And I'm going to use this as my palette uh, to add some color variation on top of this. So what I'll do now is that I'll create another layer again on top of this. I'll select the the original uh, the original uh, midtone green from that flat uh, flat layer, and grab my brush. Is this the right brush? Yes. Okay. And then what I do is that I have my uh, color picker tool um, on uh, Clip Studio Paint. I hold the Alt. And it, it, I can pick any of these colors here. You can see it on the color wheel over here changing. And what I'll do is that, for example, let's say that I want to add some of the lighter colors as like highlights uh, over here in these boring mid-tone colors. So I'll, I'll go over here and maybe in this entire gradient, I'll pick something like maybe this color here. And we can try adding little highlights of that color on these leaves over here so we're just adding like little touches of color variation in this gradient and the goal of this at this point is not to create like any sort of depth or like three-dimensional aspect to this foliage but it's more about kind of hiding the gradient because if you if you take these away like the, the if you look at the entire um, this entire block of foliage here, the gradient is very obvious, but you'll see that the more uh, color variation we add into this, let's pick the, uh, the, the most saturated lightest color that we have on our palette here, like up here, and let's start adding that over here maybe. So the more we add these little bits of color variation to this gradient, the more the gradient actually disappears to, to the naked eye. Uh, like it becomes it's, it's still there like it still does its job of uh, like cr creating contrast and creating uh, like adding different colors to your image but you don't really see it as much so that that's how i would use like the the highlight colors the the lighter values in this palette so now we can do kind of the same thing with the darker values down down here so let's pick something uh, like maybe like a sh i'm thinking of it as like a shadow color so maybe maybe this color here and maybe I want to add some some volume to 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 this bit of uh, foliage here. So I'll go like under here and just start applying this this shadow color. And then I can, if I if I apply it too much, I can sort of erase it and bring back those those highlights. And we can go like under uh, under these uh, individual leaves maybe and add like little slivers under there somehow 
Maybe this entire bit of foliage here should be in shadows. Maybe I'm going to decide that, so I'll go pick something even darker in our palette here and just apply that to the whole thing. And then I can, by erasing this color that I just applied, I can bring back some of these highlights on the edges here so that it's just not one big block of color. Maybe these leaves right there, I want to add a different shade of highlight to them. So I'll go up here, I'll pick like this color there and start applying that down here. Like you can really just go around picking all, all kinds of different colors. Maybe I want some of this desaturated green there and maybe I want to add some of the, that over here. And you can sort of experiment and find where all of the different uh, different colors in your gradient, in your palette. Like where do they work, where, where do they not work. Let's go back to our shadow color and maybe add a little sliver of shadow there. Maybe under these bits here and then erase it to uh, bring back some of those highlights. But then like if I try to add um, like a very, very saturated and light color to some of these darker bits, you can do that as well. Like if I want to bring uh, like touches of this very uh, light and very saturated like yellow green down there, but it's going to stand out like a lot like you kind of have to keep in mind uh this uh the original gradient at all times like under under your uh your little touches of uh, of shadow and highlight there is this thing and, and um you kind of have to pick the highlights and shadows accordingly And that's it. That's pretty much all there is to it, to this whole method. Uh, so just to summarize, if we go to our layers here, we have uh, the uh, our line art. On top of that, you just add your flat colors and then you slap some, uh, some gradients on top of that. Try to uh, think of the flat colors as like the midtones and then the gradients being your uh, lightest and darkest values in your palette. The more um, the more saturation you add, the more contrast there's going to be in your colors and the more interesting the end result is going to look. And then to to um, make the whole this whole gradient here less obvious, we just add some color variation using the lightest, uh, lightest values as like highlights and the darkest values as shadows. So adding color variation and a little bit of like uh, volume as well to these shapes trying to create some uh, three-dimensional shapes in these so you can see now that we've we've added all this color variation if you look at this you don't necessarily unless you really try to pay attention to what to to every little detail you don't see the gradient as much and that's what i was saying in, in the uh, intro to this video like that that sort of ms paint type of look that you get from uh, from a very basic gradient like it sort of disappears when you start adding some some color variation to it so let's do the the same thing here with these rocks and i picked rocks specifically because um they are much more geometrical objects than than like foliage foliage is pretty much a texture rocks obviously they have texture as well but they have like faces they have like planes uh, that that light is going to be hitting at a very specific angle and um, you can get some really interesting results with these kind of geometrical uh, shapes with very defined planes so let's do the same thing that we did with our foliage go back to our flat layers flat layer here flat colors uh, select let's start with this rock here go back to our uh, gradient layer grab our gradient tool let's sample this color this is like a very desaturated uh, bluish gray so let's go further into the blues and into the the dark parts maybe like something right here let's try this yeah that should work a quick gradient like this on the top of the rock let's let's try to change the hue a little bit find something more interesting can we add some uh, some purple maybe some light uh, maybe something up here there we go we have some uh, 
very light purple up there and some dark blues down here and then that, that sort of neutral gray in the middle. So this is going to be our palette this time. So now we have our uh, gradient layer. Let's go on top of that on our sort of uh, color variation layer. And then we just pick from this and I'm just going to uh, to fill different planes of this rock in, in different colors that I've chosen from this gradient. So let's decide that um, maybe the light source is like coming from from uh, from above, like this kind of angle. So maybe I want some shadow on, on these bits here. So I'll go into the darker part of our gradient, pick this color right here. Is this too dark? Oh, this could this could work. So there we go. I just took like every uh, single plane of this rock individually and I thought is this going is this plane going to be catching some light here and if it is I'll go uh, slightly more into the uh, the uh, lighter shades in this palette and pick something in those purples um, those pinks and if it's not going to be catching light I'll go more into the the darker shades but you can see that uh, immediately the the gradient that we had right here this sort of very boring flat gradient has kind of disappeared it's it hasn't actually dis disappeared it's still there but the um, with the added color variation you don't really see it that much so it doesn't look as basic anymore as this as this simple gradient but we really haven't done much like this is a kind of a form of cheating almost like i haven't picked my uh, my shadow color very precisely uh, depending on each each uh, tone that i've had in this gradient like i've just gone around in this gradient and and trying to pick some color that's either light or dark and applying it to a surface and see if that works and uh, yeah this is the end result so again i'll do the exact same thing uh, with this other rock here so I go to my uh, flat, uh, flat color layer, select the color that I want to work on, go to my gradient layer, grab my gradient tool, sample this color. This one is in these very um, grayish blues again. So maybe this time I'll try to add some, some green to it. Let's see how that looks. Let's go over here. Um, maybe our shadows can be the more green tone here. Let's try something over here. This might be too much. No, this is an interesting look. There we go. Just by experimenting, we can find some interesting, uh, interesting colors. Just be bold with your choices. And then for the, uh, the sort of highlight color, maybe we can go, um, can we go even further into the greens, like all the way to the green, greenish uh, yellows here? Let's try maybe something really not saturated over here. And let's say that this time, like the light maybe is coming from this direction. So we have a rock that looks like this. So now we have applied our gradients, which means that we have the palette that we're going to be working with. So we're going to our color variation layer and then I'll just again start applying these colors picking these colors from different points in this gradient and applying them to different uh, places on this rock Okay, so so far we've talked about things like this foliage or these rocks that are like one shape being one single color and you just want, you just work inside that, that one shape. 
uh, in that one color but what about uh, something more detailed like this character here this is a bunch of different colors arranged next to each other uh, and we have to work on each color separately so the process here would be exactly the same um, so we would have our flat colors create a layer on top of that where we're going to apply our gradients but this time i would um, take like contrast between these different colors in mind uh, when applying these gradients so for example let's say that i want to apply uh, gradients to this arm here so i'll just select uh, go to the flat color layer select that color and then go to my my gradient layer and let's say that i want a um, like a very light color on this side of the arm like i just pick like 100 percent uh, or maybe not 100% but like almost white and, and, and add like a gradient red there then I would think about the other colors so let's let's first add some darker shade maybe we want some red we have some red there on the face tattoos so maybe as an accent color we can add a touch of like red something really saturated so we have our, our light colors here so maybe i want to go darker with this like let, let's try something over here maybe maybe that's that's our the other end of uh, our gradient that, that type of uh, blood red Okay, so now that I have uh, applied some stuff to, to this arm, and, and the colors that I'm picking here are, are pretty random, but it's just to show that sometimes you get some, some interesting results by experimenting. But I, I'm thinking that the shoulder part, like the top of that arm is very light. So I want to contrast that as much as possible from what's around it. So for example, I would think, okay, this whole cape here, uh the color that is next to that very light stuff i would make it much darker just again for the purpose of contrasting things and making things pop a bit more so i'll select this green this yellowish green here okay and maybe for our lighter color if we want to add another another color to our palette on this um this cloak this cape thing Maybe we can go back to our yellow or oranges, maybe something up here, something very light. Let's try something like this. So this cape right now, this uh, cloak is a perfect example of, of how gradients can be too visible if you just leave them like this, if you don't, if you don't do anything else to them. So we're going to create our uh, next layer, the, the color variation layer. And on this, we're going to start working on trying to make this gradient less visible. So maybe I want some shadows. I'll pick our shadow color here and start pulling these shadows out of that uh, that crease around the um, around the uh, the shoulder, and slowly the. Uh, the MS Paint gradient look is going to uh, fade away. And you can see here the, the advantage of using gradients is that once I, I, I um, like if I draw this kind of these kind of long shapes, these kind of long lines going from the lighter colors into our shadow colors, they kind of just naturally fade away. Like it's it's an I don't know at least I like it. It creates these these um, sort of fading highlights almost naturally without you having to do anything. I've only added uh, like sort of shadowy bits so far to this because I want to keep this pretty dark, but I'm thinking maybe we could add like little bits of, um, maybe like some sort of rim lighting on the edges of this, uh, this hood here. So maybe we can grab some of these uh, lighter colors in our palette, our gradient like add some of this here just for a tiny bit of like added highlight barely visible there but you can see here i've barely done anything like uh, again i pick some dark color i try to to make some shadows out of it i i pick some lighter color i try to make some highlights out of it but it's all contained inside this gradient and you can see that we've gone from from our very 
boring, uh, faded, um, muted uh, flat color here to some gradient that looks like it's uh, straight out of uh, MS Paint to something that has, just by adding a couple, couple uh, bits of color variation into it, something that looks like it has a little bit more volume and it just looks maybe, hopefully, a little bit more exciting. So let's just do the same thing with our arm here, since we already added our gradients to this arm. So we'll go to the, the flat color layer, pick this color that we're, we want to work on. The, uh, the gradients are already added, so we go to our color variation layer. And uh, here is something that, that uh, I like to do with uh, if this is some kind of synthetic arm or something, or even if, it, if it's just uh, like skin tight armor that this guy is wearing, there's still some, some uh, like um, grooves, like some separation between the armor plates, uh, some hard edges. So those would be, I think, nice to um, like those hedges would catch some light. The sharp edges would get would catch some light so we can try to add some highlights to those so maybe we, we grab a uh, lighter color maybe this here and just add a sliver highlight on those sharp edges and it's a very small detail but it really when you're drawing armor it does make a huge difference like highlighting those sharp uh, edges of, of, of these armor plates like you can see here if we uh, if we zoom on this arm just clean this up a little bit just by and again I'm thinking uh, still thinking in terms of like directional light if this is the shape of the armor plate I'm, I'm deciding like consciously to add the, the highlight to the the side of the the plate where the like if the light is coming from this direction like it would be the the sharp edge would catch some light on this side like the 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 side on which you add the highlight is really important but it's it's a tiny detail like if we remove this you can see that immediately those uh, those armor plates uh, lose a little bit of volume to them and then maybe we can add like little slivers of shadow of darker uh, color to to all of these uh, muscle shapes here so this might look uh sometimes this works like when the um the gradient goes from like these kind of extremes from some red to some white it's not like a very uh, like red the shadows uh in this kind of uh situation it's not what you would go for instinctively but let's try it. it it might work it might not sometimes you get some really interesting results so maybe we can add like a sliver at the bottom of these muscular shapes and i picked the uh the red just because it was the the color the accent color on the on the the tattoos on this guy uh, like there was no other reason but like i said uh, it's really like you kind of have to think about it more as a uh, as an as a form of, um, let me just zoom out so that I have a better idea of what I'm doing here. It's a more of a form of graphic design, like working like this, uh, than a, a form of uh, coloring, like painting. Like you're not really trying to achieve anything uh, realistic. Okay, there we go. We have some. Uh, some of these uh, little slivers of red shadow there, some uh, white highlights on the edges of these uh, these armor plates. And that's really the, the extent of what I would do with this. Like, I, I really don't... Like, it's, tr it's really about, again, I'm repeating myself, but it's really more about hiding that, uh, that gradient, like this sort of... Uh, Gradient. It's really more about making that disappear to your eye than it is about uh, anything else. Like when you really think about this, like these are still hard edge, like shadows, cell shading style shadows. Um, like it's it's all still very flat. We haven't really created any. Uh, like much more volume or anything like that in this uh, specific case i think the only thing that i would still kind of uh, add here would be some some uh, some of those gradient things to the head to the skin tones uh, so we might as well do that right now so go to the flat layer select the color we want to work on go to the gradient layer 
Um, let's do... I, I tend to like... I, I know that I said that the, the light source in, in this was coming from like straight from above. I tend to like um, adding some darkness to the top of the head no matter what the light lighting conditions are. I know it sounds really... Uh, weird and counterintuitive but let me just show you what i mean so if i grab this like fully saturated uh, like dark brown here and do something like this maybe you just have to not exaggerate it too much i kind of like that look for some reason like that little bit of extra darkness. I think it has to do with the way it sort of frames the eyes, like it makes the eyes pop more. But then we have our uh, gradient here. This is a very subtle gradient, like it's much more subtle than the very uh, contrasting gradients that we've used so far. But then we go to our color variation layer and we can start adding uh, little bits of uh, highlights and shadows. Okay, and the last thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, really quickly about cell shading. Uh, so here in, in this uh, this image right now, you can see that there's a little bit of that um, that line weight variation that I talked about in the previous video, that, that sort of ambient occlusion where all of the tight spaces get darker. So that's one way uh, that, that kind of shadows have been applied to this. Another way is the, the gradients that we've used right now. Um, and those sort of obey a, uh, so, uh, kind of directional light source as well. But that doesn't mean that you cannot add um, like cell shading even on top of this. And even cell shading, I know this is going to sound strange, but even cell shading from a different light source. Um, so let me show you exactly what I mean. And usually when I do, uh, when I add cell shading on top of something like this, it's to, uh, show like a very dramatic, um, like very big shadow falling over the character or something like that. So I would go into the flat color layer here, um, selection from layer, create selection. So that, that selects, uh, all of the, the colors, uh, together. So now I can only draw on the, the, the flat colors. And then I have a, a layer here set to 40% opacity. The color, color that I have selected, you can see here, is like a, a dark purple. That's my default for any uh, cell shading uh, shadows. So let's say that I want a, uh, a shadow falling on this guy, like diagonally, kind of like this, and covering the top, uh, top part of his body. There we go. So now you can see that um, uh, we have our uh, gradient kind of color variation, if you want to call them shadows. And then we have this sort of big shadow on top of them. And if you were to look at this in a very sort of detailed, realistic way, uh, you could say that, yeah, some of these shadows clearly don't come from the same light source and some of them are kind of inconsistent. If you want to approach this in a more stylized, like comic book kind of way, this I, I think at least to me uh, this still works, and I still use this kind of uh, approach regularly. And uh, you can even like uh, once you have this shadow layer, the cell shading layer on top, you can um, do the same thing with this layer that we did with with the uh, color variation layer. Meaning that you go you go in, you can you can erase some highlights if I want some. Uh, rim lighting on this face here i could erase a little sliver of this uh, this shadow layer uh, to uh, imply like a <clears throat> like a secondary light source maybe on on this side of the character add little bits of highlight there something like that so um yeah it, it pretty much works uh, exactly the same way as the other layers and you can kind of apply uh like highlights and shadows to it exactly in the same way okay so that's pretty much it uh, now with this video plus the previous one about uh line art and line weight uh you should have everything to understand how i kind of approach uh, lines and coloring and how i try to use all of those elements like line weight and 
uh, gradients to create the, the look uh, that I have in my drawings. As always, if you would like to see more art, there's a bunch of links in the description below, my uh, Twitter, Instagram, ArtStation, and so on. We also have a Discord server that is also linked in the description. Uh, if you'd like to join us there, we have a nice little community of artists uh, that you can uh, discuss with and get feedback or give feedback. So check that out, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If you would like to support this channel and help me make more videos, check out this Patreon link on screen right now, or in the description below, where you can get all of my PSD files as well as real-time versions of all my videos.